again everyone welcome to another thunder cougar falcon blog oh my how the tables have turned as i just did so quite dramatically as you can tell by the title of this video uh we're talking about the other side of the whole uh dan brown versus michael aranda situation right now i do have to say i'm pretty excited uh because the last video uh, which was kind of the Michael Aranda side of the whole situation. That video right now, uh, by my standards, is doing incredibly well. As of right now, at this point, it's got over 150 views as I'm recording this, um, and it seems like every time I check it, the views keep going up, um, which I know by most YouTube standards, that's like, meh. But for me, that's really good. The only other video that, that I've posted that's gotten that many views um, is actually, it wasn't even like a vlog video or anything, it was just a video I made one night. Uh, it was like 3 in the morning and I was bored and I was listening to um, ICP's new album and I was lip syncing to uh, the song Juggalo Island. And that's got like close to 700 views at this point. Uh, if you want to watch that video, you can click right here and don't be a hater. But for this video, uh, I'm going to be talking about the other side of the Dan Brown, Michael Arana situation. Um, because now, after much prodding from his fans, uh, not only has Dan finally shaved, so he doesn't look like a crazy homeless pedophile anymore, uh, but he's also finally sat down and addressed the whole Michael Arana situation. And I do have to say that now, hearing more of Dan's side of it other than just kind of don't worry about it, I'm taking care of it, and then kind of going on just what Michael Aranda had to say, it's kind of making Michael Aranda look not so much uh, like a shady a-hole, but definitely makes him look like kind of a shitty employee. Basically, according to Dan, what happened is, you know, he was getting frazzled, so he brings on Michael to take on the project, and pretty quickly on they, you know, realize that just kind of living out of Dan's mom's basement while they're working on this together was kind of a, a little stifling, so they went to Michael's place in Southern California. And while they were there, I guess Dan said that, you know, he wasn't really feeling Southern California, you know, like he thought he might. And he floated the idea of San Francisco. And while Michael was not you know, adamantly like, oh god, no, I don't want to go there. He was still very just kind of like, meh. I, I kind of envision it as like when you have one of those friends where you're like, hey man, do you want to go out and get some pizza later? Oh, I guess, I mean, whatever. What, don't you like pizza? It's whatever, I mean, I don't really care. Well, it's a yes or no answer. Whatever. It seems to be like kind of one of those situations. It, it wasn't like a major drastic change or anything, but then the whole thing kind of started to shift even more when Michael got the offer to start producing uh, an album. And while Dan says, you know, that's all well and good, he's still technically an employee of Dan 3.0. Like, he is was hired and is being paid by Dan for this project, so the fact that he's already kind of within the first couple weeks of the project, kind of like about doing anything, he, he's also starting to take on other projects. And he said, you know, right away when they got back to Southern California, um, that professionally, Michael's work started to suffer because he was slacking on getting any of the, the videos edited, things were being, you know, uploaded late. It, it's not exactly a very productive way of getting things done. From what Michael had said on Forum Spring about the whole road trip incident, the original plan was that Dan was going to fly back to Nebraska, get his stuff, get his girlfriend, get his car, drive back to California, pick up Michael and his girlfriend, and then head out on the road trip. And according to Michael, um, the whole time he was there, it went from like a couple days to a couple weeks, and there was like zero communication between anybody. But now according to Dan, there were, you know, outside factors that pushed the road trip back. And while this was going on, he was calling, emailing, leaving messages and everything for Michael to let him know what was going on. 
and apparently Michael never answered the phone, never returned a call, never returned emails. So Dan's trying to let him know, hey, you know, this is going to get pushed back a little bit, this is what's going on, because the in initial plan was that once they left for their road trip, they were going to try and get the road trip done in time for Michael to be back to start working on the album. So since that was being pushed back, he wouldn't be back in time to work on the album. So if you look at it from Dan's perspective as an employer, you get an employee who you know, essentially comes to work late, uh, doesn't really care about his job and isn't turning in work on time and from a business standpoint there's no point in keeping that employee around and from that point according to Dan he thought everything was all well and good from then because you know Michael seemed cordial everything seemed pretty squared away uh, he came to the California gathering when they were in California for that part of the road trip Everything seemed fine. He had all these opportunities to say, I got beef with you, Dan Brown! But no nothing happened, so he thought it was, you know, everything was fine. And then Michael comes along on Form Spring and is like, Yeah, I got fired and I don't know why. I haven't been paid. Yada, yada, yada. I mean, when I read that, I was like, Whoa, dude, like, not cool. Like, you can't just bail on a dude and then not pay him for his services either. It's like, yeah, he, he got contracted to do this other thing, but sometimes you get hired for a job and a better opportunity comes along and you gotta leave that job to go for the better job. That happens. But from a business standpoint, I totally understand where Dan's coming from. And it does make Michael look like kind of a douche. And it makes him look a little shady if he's saying, you know, he never contacted me and I've never been paid because Dan has said that he left him many messages, there were many opportunities when he could have confronted him in person or contacted him via any channel and aired his grievances. And from what Dan has said, Michael was paid for not only all of the work that he did, but also for some of the work that he didn't do because he felt that, you know, he didn't have uh, enough advance warning that he was gonna be let go. So he even got paid for work that he didn't do. I, I actually do think it was kind of admirable the way that Dan didn't say anything because he didn't want to make Michael out to be the bad guy because Michael very much does look like kind of the bad guy now. And I, I think that's cool that he was trying to kind of help him save face by not addressing it. However, by not addressing it and not talking about the whole situation, it made Dan look shady, and it made Michael look more like he was the one being screwed over. It's YouTube's version of John and Kate. I definitely do have a higher opinion of, of Dan now, uh, having heard his side of the story. I still wish that he would just kind of give it up and, and, and let it go. Just call a spade a spade. Just ad admit that it was kind of a failed project. It was a good idea on paper when put into practice. It doesn't really work. Dan seems like a good enough guy, but he's definitely just been phoning it in uh, with Dan 3.0, and he needs to just just call it quits and just go back to being himself. Uh, if you want to watch his video actually addressing the whole situation, you can click right here on this Rubik's Cube. And if you're confused by why the link is a Rubik's Cube, just go back and watch some old school Dan, and it'll make more sense. All right, well, that's gonna do it for me, but before I get out of here, I do wanna say a couple things. First, again, thank you to everyone that has been watching and subscribing. Thanks to everyone that watched the last video. Um, again, you know, that's like a huge thing for me. And continue with this one. Uh, hit the like button, uh, comment, um, don't forget to subscribe up there as well. But also, before I go, I have started another channel. Bam, you can check it out right there. It's called Frisbee TV. Uh, and it is my very own YouTube talk show. Right now, they've just got the one video on there. Uh, but I think, personally, you know, I worked really hard on it, and I, I think it's very funny, and that's the whole point, is that it's gonna be kind of more comedic. And I do hope eventually to, uh, actually be able to interview other, like, YouTube people. Uh, so that, that, that would be cool to, to do kind of a, a collaboration kind of thing. Check it out. Frisbee TV, right there. Mmm. Alright, well that's gonna do it for me. Thanks again for watching guys. 